All right, yesterday's assignment were these eight specific word problems, and let's see how you did. Keep in mind, there are a number of ways you could set up the equation. So I'm going to go through the answers with you and then just let you know that there are a lot of different ways to tackle it. All right, so let's look at problem number one. First things first, excuse me, final answer here. I'll get my highlighter out. The width is two centimeters and the length is seven. There are a few different ways to get there. Here's one method. And I think we got this first, uh, first one set up for you in class. Perimeter is 18. So you have two widths and two lengths is 18. Now this second equation where it says the length is uh, five more than the width. There's really a variety of equations you could have used for that second situation. All right, this is just one of them. Length is w plus five. You could have also thought of it this way. <clears throat> you said uh, if I took five away from the length, then I'd get down to the same number the width is. You could have done that. Or you could have said, hey, if I take the length and the width and subtract them, I get five. Boom. Okay, I happen to choose this one and then went about solving it by substitution substituting that in and then you get a two and a seven all right for those two two and seven all right let's jump to the marble one on here here's what i end up with you should get 106 plain ones and 74 colored ones they actually ask for how many colored marbles does he have so i guess to truly answer it you get 74 but you had to kind of go through and find both of them in order to evaluate or get this. Uh, when it says you have a total, that that first sentence right here, your first equation is add the two together and get 180. The second equation, just like that first one, <clears throat> I said the plain marbles, which was more than, specifically 32 more than the colored, means you have colored marbles plus 32, then you'd have the same number as the planes. So I used that equation. You could also say, take the plain ones, subtract 32. That's how many colored ones you'd have, or simply find the difference between the two, and you have 32. Any of those work, this is the one I chose, <clears throat> and then went through and substituted to get my two number values. All righty, 74 colored, 106 plain. Number three, you're starting with a certain number of chairs in the auditorium. So you have balcony seats and floor seats. And when you add them up, you get 900. So there's your first equation right there. The second one talks about the money. So I take $10 times every balcony seat. And imagine that gives you a pile of money for just those balcony seats. 12 bucks for every floor seat. Multiply 12 times F, that gives you another pile of money, and the total pile of money from all these ticket sales is 9,780. Pause this anytime you need to. All right, here we go. I took that first equation and I solved for the balcony tickets right here. You could certainly do it the other way. Then I substituted those in, in the price one, and ended up with 390 floor seats, 510 balcony seats. When you plug those in in each equation, they work. Ta-da! I'll scooch down here a little bit if you need to see more of this work on how the substitution went. And by all means, feel free to pause it so you can find it. Ryan and Carl, this one you might actually be able to simply guess and check or use some other strategies to end up with Ryan having 16 hours and Carl is 12. However, I also want you to be able to look at it and analyze it and interpret it algebraically. R plus K is 28 because that's the total hours. Ryan worked more than Carl, four more than Carl. Four more than Carl is the same as Ryan. There's your two equations. I substituted. There you go. Next, number five. 
Your two numbers are 10 and 15. This one was probably the most hideous one to set up by substitution. And today, after we learn elimination, you're going to totally hate me. Say, why did you make me go through all of this gobbledygook? And I could have done it using an elimination method. That's because I'm mean. Pretty much. Here are your two equations. Once you get those set up, now because we only know substitution way, it gets pretty ugly, okay? So stop and pause this thing step by step if you need to, but you should end up with 10 and 15, okay? I chose to solve for x in that second equation because it had a coefficient of two. And when I get to that point of eventually having to divide by two, dividing by two is not that bad. Everything's halvesies fine okay when I got that substitution then I went to that first equation and I took all of this ugly fraction mess and put it in right there for x I got a y value of 15 my x value is 10 and well there you go okay doke it works in both of them trust me all right, number six, this is another one that you could probably reason your way through with guessing and checking, but you end up with the numbers 15 and 21 because they add up to 36. The difference is six. And oh boy, once I give you the elimination method, you'll come back and look at this and say, oh, oh it's so easy. Sorry, I have the yawns today. All right, number seven. This one's pretty straightforward. There's more boys than girls, okay? Specifically three more than the girls have. Add them together, you get 41. You should end up with 22 and 19. Notice how they're three apart. Notice how they add up to 41. Last but not least, number eight. The two numbers you get are nine and six. So you add them up and you get 15. Two times nine, is 18. 3 times 6 is 18. Ta-da! I'll push that up a little bit so you can see it with all the work. And there you go. Okay, when you get done with that, then make sure your name's on it. You can hand that in and start learning about the elimination method. Gonna love it.